deep and surface approaches to learning are actually approaches that students themselves and research way back in the 1970s actually told us. They, those are terms that students in the research used. So it's not something that professors and you know, educational, educational theorists came up with. The students have told us that they adapt their learning, their approach to learning based on the context in which they're learning, based on their perception of the learning environment. Surface learning is when they take a very rote approach to learning. They're not interested in meaning and understanding. They want to perhaps give back to the instructor what they think the instructor wants them to give. And so it's a question of learning by rote, memorizing, paying very little attention to um, you know, challenging situations. Just, just do the, the minimum that you effort, put in the minimum effort that you can in order to get through the course. A deep approach to learning is when the student is motivated to go to the meaning, to understand what they're learning. And so it's not simply a question of memorizing. They themselves ask questions about things that they've encountered in the learning process. They are interested enough to realize that a deep approach requires them to be actively involved in the learning process, to participate by asking questions, by seeking answers themselves, and by really look, trying to look for deeper understanding. I'm a I'm big, uh, big believer in um, associative anchoring. So deep learning is anchored in association. So I will always go for understanding over memory, always. So I will, I will privilege understanding over memorization. And quite frankly, in the online environment, <laughs> memorization doesn't make much sense to me anyway. Um, but I, I do privilege um, comprehension, understanding, um, application over um, memorization, fact-based, discrete types of um, evidences. Although I understand that we need to use discrete evidences early in order to get more complex and consolidated evidences later. In education theory, there's this distinction that's made between uh, deep and surface approaches to learning. And the idea is that with surface approaches to learning, often it's this kind of, you know, uh, cram for the exam or for the assignment or stay up all night getting the paper in uh, and then you don't remember it beyond that, right? Uh, you're, or you're just sort of at the, in the same way that an iceberg just has this tip that sticks out, but then there's this whole bigger piece below that you don't really see. Um, when students are engaged or, you know, any of us are engaged in, um, surface approaches learning, we're just getting at that very tip of the iceberg. We're not getting at all of that really rich and really powerful stuff that's below. Um, and so, you know, you want to get students to using more, um, more of the deep approaches learning. And you can design a course in that way. And the way that, that you bring some of that um, into a course is to figure out ways to get students not just you know, reflecting on their learning experiences, but also engaged in um, what's often talked about in education theory as deliberate practice, right? Where they're not just doing it to do it, you know, or they're not just doing it to get the paper done. They are engaged in actually practicing a skill and deliberately practicing that skill, thinking about uh, what it is that they're doing and how to improve it. And that means often not just building those opportunities, but making sure that you're giving the kind of feedback that students need so that they know how to improve that skill as they go along and as they progress. Much like the community of inquiry scale gives you a sense of this, this presence thing, um, there is a BIGS scale, B-I-G-G-S, that is all about trying to gauge the level at which students are interacting with the course. And, and the biggest division is between the surface versus deep level. Um, it is a very predictive scale. I've, I've found in many cases that um, you know, as a basic indicator, if you want to predict marks, this scale predicts them very well. Those with a deep uh, approach learn much better and get much better marks. So it, once again, it provides a tool. Um, and then when, when I try to do things like even the, the example of turning um, uh, reward contingencies into flirting or something like that, you can get a sense of whether that makes people approach the material more deeply. You can look for changes in the orientation of the scale 
uh, as a function of the assessments you use or what, you know, what have you. So once again, it's another good formative tool, something I think every good instructor should be keeping an eye on as they make changes through a course. The same student can sometimes take a surface approach with one, in one course and one professor and a deep approach with another. And that's because of the environment that, that they perceive exists in each of those courses. So how you design a course is critical. If you design a course where, where the learning outcomes are not explicit, then it, the, they, it does not give the student an opportunity to um, in, immerse themselves in the process. Also, the assessment is an important part of the design. Um, we know how important assessment is to students. That's one of the first questions they ask. How are we going to be evaluated in this course? And they can very early in the course, based on how you've designed the assessment, recognize what it is you want from them. Are you seeking a demonstration of learning or are you seeking regurgitation of information that you have provided? And so how you design the course, the kinds of activities that you, that you um, engage the students in, the kinds of assessment that you, that you develop for the course would impact the student's choice about what approach to use. It's a choice. And they make that choice based on their life.